friends we are uh, uh, today we are going to talk on the subject of section 43 amendment msme and its implication there are so many issues which is likely to come up in the years to come what are the provision which government has decided to take it like msme is dealing with an and with a large organization and they are not making payments in time so what government has said that if you don't make a payment in time it will not be allowable as an expense in the year in which you incur the expenditure but on the year in which you make the payment the expenditure would be allowable for that nirav shah company secretary is going to deliberate on the subject and we are going to take some examples at the later stage where each and every combination of permutation combination is explained and still if you don't understand just whatsapp at whatsapp at 9825804094 or email us there are many many presentation is available on youtube on different subject if you just ask you can download it and nowadays there are a lot of notices are coming in gst okay so we are going to have a sequel of the event starting from uh, this friday 29th at 6:30 27 january at 6:30 on the subject of gst series we are going to take high court and supreme court judgment with a view in mind when you are dealing with daily day to day courses and sometimes you don't have a say in the matter and department is taking levy penalties interest and something lot bots and not so not but once you re re read this cases i would put it in a blog with ppt with explanation and also ex explain you in a youtube presentation this is our main motto i am also running an isaka chapter on the bad where if anybody wants to do isaka chapter related courses you can come the next sequel on the same subject would be 3rd february nirav shah is going to talk right now on the subject of this msme in this qualification he will explain you definition of msme what are the permutation combination and still if any query remains you are just welcome with this i hand over the mic to nero he is expert on the subject and you will enjoy the hearing okay and this presentation would be put on ppt as a ebook and gst ebook also would be available in his book but we all on blog in blog there are a lot of presentation you just go and enjoy the presentation our main aim is to beat china in the growth growth trajectory which india has missed for years with the advent of uh, modi saab he has taken it to a different level let's join hand with nirmal modi saab in making the country a powerful country with this hand over to uh, nirobi good evening friends first of all thank you to ishaka amdabad chapter nc nitin patak to given me the opportunity to deliver a talk on the today's session on 40th section 43b of income tax act uh 43b section uh new section added to this section is 43b h by in ck union budget 2023 and it will be implic is a implement or implic which what are the implication of this section we will discuss today's session before starting the today's session we need to understand uh, about uh, the who is msme who what is the importance of date of payment what is the importance of acceptance the date of deem acceptance of the delivery of the goods or rendering of the service and what are the consequences of the allow the disallowance of expenses uh, of uh, purchases or services from msme there are interest provision there and what what is the effect of non disallowance of the expenses or disallowance of expenses and it would be added to your income or net profit directly and uh, now as of now 
every enterprise have an issue with how to deal with this section 43b how we deal with the msme enterprise how how to secure uh, secure and timely making the payment to the supplier okay government nowadays very proactive government wants to support to every msme enterprise before coming this section uh, government uh, given the security to payment of the msme enterprise uh, payment of enterprise now they want msme enterprise get their payment in time uh, say 45 days we will discuss the uh, what is the time limit and what is the category of the msme enterprise we will discuss one by one in this session but in short uh, government uh, government this initiative for msme to get uh, get their secure payment and timely payment from the buyer okay so first of all starting with section 43b msme payment and amendment and implication qua introduction of the new section 43b h this will be applicable from 1st april 2024 this amendment is made on union budget 23 applicable from 1st april introduction of the this section focus for micro and small enterprise not medium enterprise what is the micro small and medium enterprise we will discuss this socio-economic welfare measure aims to ensure timely payment to this entity by modifying deduction provision outlined in this section okay so as of now section 43b following are allowable deduction when it's paid means okay these are the uh, expenditure which are accrual on 31st march but paid after once on and after or before due date of filing return they are allowable deduction in income tax what are the expenses any tax any duty says fee paid under any law in force like statutory dues include gst custom duty vet employee provident fund gratuity bonus commission payable to employee interest on borrowing from financial institution leave investment provided by the employer to his employees means these all our expenses are accrued on 31st march and paid on or before the due date of filing the filing are allowable deduction under section 43b to every witness entity or any taxpayer now this section one more added expenditure or purchase or rendering of the service to msme through introduction of the new subsection 43b h new section what is the new section 43b h any sum payable by assc to micro or small enterprise beyond time limit specified in section 15 of micro small and medium enterprise development act 2006 upon through examination of the language used in 43b h it is evident that the amendment provision will exclusively apply to micro and small enterprise medium enterprise are explicitly excluded from the scope of this provision the interpretation is crucial is understanding the targeted applicability of the amendment with focusing focuses on specifically on requirement of micro and small businesses excluding those category as medium enterprise in in short new section 43 bh says that any amount payable by buyer to supplier and supplier is a micro or small enterprise and buyer needs to payment make payment within the time limit specified under the section 15 of the msme act 2006 one thing very crucial to understand that 
they include only micro and small enterprise, not medium enterprise. What is the micro and small enterprise definition and what are the uh, covered enterprise under the medium enterprise we will discuss later on. Now here, classification of the micro, small and medium enterprise as per section 7 of MSME Act 2006. As per section 7 of MSME Act, the central government may for the purpose of MSME Act by notification classify any class or category class classes of enterprise whether proprietorship, HUF, AOP, cooperative society, partnership firm, company or undertaking by whatever name called into a micro, medium or small enterprise. Section 7 of the MSME Act itself classified the enterprise engaged in the manufacturing of the production of the goods pertaining to any industry specified in the first schedule of the to the industry development and regulation act 1951 and also enterprise engaged in the providing or rendering of the service an enterprise may classified as micro medium or small enterprise on this on the basis In short, here is the classified MSME enterprise will is a cooperatorship, HUF, AOP, cooperative, any 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 type of entity is a MSME enterprise. They cover it all, excluding the government authority or uh, like uh, public sector unit. They are excluded from MSME. MSME classified the manufacturing engaged in the manufacture and production of goods pertaining to the industries specified in the first schedule. It means they include the providing the goods or delivery of the goods or manufacturing of the goods. They are included under the MSME. Also include the who are the rendering the service to the enterprise or business entity. They both are uh, they included under the category of the MSME. Here is the classified how to define uh, entity is the micro size enter, uh, entity, small size entity or medium size entity. First, any manufacturing enterprise and enterprise rendering the service means both include who's providing who's provide the goods or manufacturing of the goods or rendering of the service both are included under msme for micro size enterprise include if enterprise investment in plant and machinery or equipment up to 1 crore and annual turnover up to 5 crore they fall under the micro size category of under the msme act if investment in plant and machinery or equipment more than 1 crore or less than 10 crore an annual turnover more than 5 crore or up to the 50 crore, they fall under the small size enterprise. If investment in plant and machinery or equipment more than 10 crore but up to the 50 crore, an annual turnover more than 50 crore but up to the 250 crore, they are covered under the medium size enterprise. It is clarified by explanation 1271 of MSME Act that in calculating the investment in plant and machinery, the cost of pollution control, research and development, etc., are excluded as per the notification. In short, micro size enterprise, if if the investment in plant and machinery up to one crore and annual turnover up to five crore, they are covered under micro size enterprise. If the enterprise turnover exceed the five crore. And, but the investment in 1 crore plant and machinery, then they fall under the small size category because the, the turnover exceed the limit as per micro size enterprise categorized by the MSME Act. Same as if the, the investment in plant and machinery more than, uh, more than 1 crore up to 10 crore, but annual turnover is the thing exceed the 51, 50 crore, say 51 crore, then 
they are not under the small size enterprise they are covered under the medium size enterprise and this uh, this provision 43 bh is only on only apply to micro and small size enterprise not medium size enterprise if if the athi you if your msme entity have a title of this thing uh, they are covered under msme but their their category is a medium size enterprise then they will not get the benefit of the making the payment in timely payment as per the section 43 bh okay so if the the companies that the uh, entity have a turnover or investment in plant and machinery exceed this this limit then this covered under the next category or next uh, uh, categories by the msme act now extract of the relevant provision of the msme act in msme act what is the the event important for the making payment three things very important the date of acceptance the date of deem acceptance and appointed we will discuss one by one date of acceptance means the date of actually delivery of the goods or rendering of the service or where any objection is made in writing by the buyer regarding acceptance of goods or service within the 15 days from the date of delivery of the goods or rendering of the service the day on which such objection is removed by the supplier and the date of deem acceptance means where no objection is made in writing by buyer regarding the acceptance of goods or service within 15 days from the date of delivery of the goods or rendering of the service the day of actual delivery of the goods or rendering of the service would be the day of the deem acceptance appointed day appointed day means the day following immediately after the expiry of the period of 15 days from the date of acceptance or date of deem acceptance of the goods or service now it is clear here that the date of acceptance means the the day on which actually delivery of the goods or rendering of the service and where any objection is received from the buyer buyer within the 15 days time of the delivery of the goods or rendering of the service then the day on which such event is happen the is called date of acceptance in the date of deem acceptance when the there is no objection made writing by the buyer regarding the acceptance of the goods or services within 15 days the date of the delivery of the goods or rendering of the service or the actual date of delivery of the goods or rendering of the service is called date of deem acceptance means it is necessary to acceptance the day of acceptance the start the date for buyer is liable to paying the making the payment from the date of acceptance to the actual date of payment the time limit specified under the msme act is start from the date of acceptance date of deem acceptance or appointed day here section 15 of the msme act says the, the time limit for payment to the supplier whether agreement regarding the terms of payment between the buyer and supplier exist in writing if yes then whether the due date of payment is mentioned in agreement yes then on or before agreed period or 45 days from the date of the agreement whichever is earlier 15 days from the date of acceptance or deem acceptance if there is no agreement and if there is no agreement between buyer and supplier then 15 days date of exception in short we need to understand two thing if buyer and supplier have any agreement between the be, between two if yes then as per the agreement making the payment or maximum limit is 45 days if there is the, the agreement but the due date is not specified in agreement then 15 days from the deem acceptance means the, the date of delivery of the actually actually delivery of the goods or rendering of the service the day on which is called appointed day or deem acceptance 
and the day start from that day to actual payment or within the 15 days from that day uh, supplier needs to the buyer needs to making the payment to supplier and if there is the no agreement between the buyer and supplier then 15 days from the date of acceptance date of acceptance we, we have already discussed earlier says that the day on which the actually delivery of the goods or actually rendering of the service on that day to 15 within the 15 days buyer needs to make the payment to supplier now we go by practical example case to case first case related to the goods purchasing of the goods say xyz private limited purchase goods worth say 15 lakh from y limited and y limited is a small enterprise as per section 2 of msme Act. how to define small enterprise we have already discussed earlier small enterprise means their investment in plant and machinery is up to 1 crore and their turnover uh, say uh, 5 crore. Now XYZ private limited makes the payment time allow under the 15 day section 15 of the MSME Act say 45 days. Then entity XYZ private limited entitled for allowance allowed purchases and payment is made in within the time limit and allowable expenditure in same financial year. Second case, XYZ Limited makes the payment after after time allowed under the section 15 of the MSME Act but within the previous year. Then entitled for the allowable purchase and payment is made in the, in the year of expenditure to so allowable expenditure in same year. Now, third one, XYZ Limited makes the payment in 24-25 after the time allowed under Section 2 of the 15 of the MSME Act or before the due date of the filing. Payment will be disallowed for that year, that is 23-24 and allowable in 24-25 and this purchases are disallowed for the 23-24 and allowable in 24-25 and uh, this disallowance of this purchase are offered to the added back to net profit of the entity and liable to make the payment make the make the tax on that and uh, they also claim the same in 24-25 now simple uh, XYZ limited if the, they make the payment as per the time limit specified under the MSME, MSME Act, then they are uh, see, their purchase are allowable purchase and uh, the expenditure are allowable expenditure and I uh, claim the same year. If the uh, make the payment time allowed it to get more than time allowed means to get time specified, but within the same financial year, then allowable purchase and uh, uh, he claim the same as the expenditure, but need to pay interest what is the interest provision we will discuss later on okay, the, uh, buyer needs to make the payment for difference period from the date of actually he make the payment and the date of actually due date of the payment need to pay interest on that and third one is uh, if the, the purchases from the uh, last financial year and make the payment in next financial year then this their purchase would be disallowed in that same year and allowable in next year and I think and they need to pay uh, uh, tax on that and add it to their net profit now second example of the services XYZ Private Limited engage in the audit service of the Mr. Y. As per the agreement, fees were to be paid after completion of the audit within the 15 days. XYZ Private Limited makes the provision for the audit fee as on 31st March for the say 1,50,000. The God the audit gets completed by 31st August 24 and payment 
made within the 15 days as agreed from the 31st August 24. Then no disallowance under section 43B called. Audit fee will be allowable in 2324 because the payment is made as per agreement and period of 15 days will be counted from the date of acceptance of the service, which in this case, 31st August 24. In short, if the if the X in this case says that service rendered on or before the uh, specified period that is 31st August and uh, payment is made accrual basis on 31st March and the date of acceptance is 31st August 24 and within the 15 days time limit is specified under the MSME Act buyer making the make the payment to the supplier on or on or within the uh, time limit that is uh, 15 days so that buyer allowable to claim the expenditure of this services in same financial year and because that it makes the payment in within the time limit specified under the MSME Act. In a nutshell of all things need to remember three things. If buyer and supplier have a agreement specified the 20 days time then makes the payment within the 20 days. If the agreement is specified days, say 60 days, means more than 45 days, then makes to then time limit for making payment will be 45 days. And if there is no agreement between buyer and supplier, then time limit for making payment is 15 days from the date of invoice or date of acceptance of the delivery of the goods or rendering of the service or actually deem acceptance of the uh, service or goods okay now here is the example each and every case of uh, time limit specified if a agreement is there and not agreement is there payment is made or not payment is there and allowable in same year or next year we will discuss one by one first example says if Invoice date is 12th July 23 and as per the invoice agreed date due date is 26th August and amount of expense or amount of purchase here 12 lakh. Payment made on 31st March then allowable this purchase on 23-24 there is no disallowance because the payment is done within the time limit and uh, same financial year and agreed period. Second example, if the invest date is 12 July and there is no mention due date in invoice, then earlier we discussed the 15 days from the date of invoice that is 27 July is the payment date and amount of expenditure say 12 lakh and payment is actually made on 31st March then their purchases or expense expenses are allowable in same financial year there is no disallowance only interest provision are there and the buyer need to pay interest on difference period from the 27th July to 31st March now third one if the invoice date is the 12th July and is, there is a mention the due date in the invoice is 26th August. But actually payment is made 10th April, means end of the financial year. And they say amount of expenditure is 12 lakh. Then the expenditure or purchase allowable in 24, 25 and disallowance for the 23, 24 and add, added back to net profit 12 lakh and need to pay, buyer need to pay tax on that and I think claim the same in 24 25 because the time limit is mentioned in invoice but actually make the payment on next financial year then exceeding uh, exceeding the time limit specified under the msme act okay now fourth case if invoice date is the 12th july and there is no date due date is mentioned in invoice 
then a, a due date will be 27 July and actually make the payment on 10th April then same as earlier this allowance for the 23 24 and allowable in the 24 25 because the exit the time limit as specified in MSME Act and end of the financial year buyer make the payment to the supplier okay now fifth one say invest date is the 12th July and agreement mentioned the date of uh, due, due date of payment is 26th August but buyer makes the payment in two parts first part on 31st October and second part 8 lakh make the payment on 15th April means next financial year then what will happen within the financial year or within the time limit payment of say 4 lakh are allowable in same financial year that is 23-24 and the 8 lakh will be allowable purchase or allowable expenditure but allowable in next financial year that is 24-25 and the 8 lakh rupees for 23-24 are disallowance and are added back to net profit and need to pay buyer need to pay tax on that in short if the uh, say one invoice and payment makes in tranches then need to understand the, the how much amount paid on or before the end of financial year or end of the uh, within the time limit specified under the MSME Act and after that or before filing of return what are the payment made to supplier if the within the time limit or within the same financial year is paid then allowable expenditure or allowable purchase and are uh, only need to pay only interest of exceeding period and the after the, the end of the financial year or before filing of the return uh, payment is done are this allowance for the uh, previous year and allowable in the next year and also need to add to your income okay next example say inverse date is the 4th March and due date is the 18th April say amount of expenses is 12 lakh and actually making the payment on 20th April then also same is exceed the time limit specified under the MSME Act so this allowance for the 23-24 and allowable in the 24-25 next first say invoice date is the 1st March and due date mentioned in the invoice is 15 April and amount of expenditure will be is 12 lakh and actually make the payment on 15th April then allowable in the same financial year and there is no disallowance because the payment is made in within the time limit to the buyer to the supplier next if the 1st March is the invoice date and there is the no due date is mentioned in the invoice and then as per the MSME Act 15 days from the date of invoice is 15th March is the, the payment date if no agreement is there and actually made the payment on 16th March then is uh, there is no disallowance because the same financial year only thing is the need to pay interest for uh, exceeding time limit more than 15 days time next one if the, the invoice date is the 31st March 24 and actually made make the payment one minute uh, actually make the payment actually make the payment on 15th April and due date is the 16th April then there is the allowable expenditure in same financial year and there is the no disallowance is there because the attorney makes the payment in same financial year last one if the invoice date is the 31st March and there is no agreement uh, there is the no due date in the invoice date then invoice then due date is the 16th April and uh, actually payment made on 20th April 
then one minute then it will be the credit allowance for the financial year 23-24 and allowable in the 24-25. Means if there is the exit time limit and there is the they make the payment after due date as per the MSME Act and before filing of return. So it will be at the allowable in 24-25 and this allowance for the 23-24. Okay. Till all crux of this matter is makes the payment within the time limit specified. If, if if there is the agreement is there, then as per the agreement. And if there is no agreement, then 15 days time. And if there is the uh, agreement, say more than 45 days, then time limit will be maximum is 45 days. And after that, there is the, the disallowance. If the, the end uh, may make the payment after end of the financial year or before the filing of return, and it will be a disallowance for the debt year and uh, uh, need to add it back to your income and need to pay tax on that. And uh, the, the, it will be available as an expenditure and actually make the payment in next year. Now, here is the example how to offer the or how to add it back to your income of disallowance of the expenses or disallowance of the purchase under the not making the payment in time say net profit of the entity for ay 2425 is 5 lakhs amount of outstanding towards creditor msme micro and small enterprise due more than 45 days 15 lakhs out of which 5 lakh was paid before 31st March and 7 lakh was paid before the filing of right year. And balance 3 lakh was outstanding the date of filing of return. Due date, due to outstanding amount payable to micro and small enterprise, exit 45 days, said amount is subject to being added back to your net profit. And the, this adjustment is necessary by the disallowance under section 43B resulting from the in introduction of the new section effective from the 1st April 2023. Here is the case. In this case, entity have a profit of say 5 lakh. Entity have a outstanding creditor of rupees 15 lakh. Out of 15 lakh, uh, 5 lakh was paid on or before 20, 31st March. 7 lakhs was paid before filing of ITR and 3 lakh was paid after, after due date of filing ITR then what will be happen? Net profit in 5 lakh. Amount of disallowance of the expenditure or purchase is 10 lakh. 10 lakh include the 7 lakh, which is paid on or before the due date of filing return and after the end of financial year or end of the specified limit, say 45 days. And uh, 3 lakhs is uh, the paid on or after the filing of return or after the due date of filing return and after the exceeding the due more, more than 45 days are both are included to the your net profit and total amount of net profit would be 15 lakhs and tax on that, whatever applicable as per the tax lab. Here, amount payable to MSME creator which is outstanding more than 45 days on 31st March and same is paid on or before the due date of filing return. And after the uh, RZ disallows under section 43B H as per the new section, because the, the they are uh, may make the payment exceeding time limit as specified under, under the 15th section 15 of the MSME Act. So what are the rec recommendation regarding the classification of the MSME or how to deal with the uh, MSAB enti entity. So every business entity need to obtain annual declaration confirming their classification as MSME. This facilitates the purchaser in identifying entity status. Means uh, the entity you are dealing with the MSME entity, but you don't know that the MSME entity is uh, the what category they have 
the, their status like uh, micro small or medium enterprise if they claim their status as register also obtain the copy of registration and from which category micro small or medium may be established from the registration certificate distinguishing list of the creditor categorize msme beginning of the fiscal year and the acquiring the certificate or declaration from creditor confirming their status under msme and or alternate you need to mention uh, as a, as a, recommend your supplier that can mention msme category in their invoice like msme register or what is the their status micro small or medium size enterprise in short every business entity need to obtain annual declaration from supplier if the they say they are uh, registered under msme they need to obtain registration certificate registration certificate clarify that okay, what type of the entity and what is the category of the entity like uh, small medium or micro enterprise if the small and micro enterprise then uh, the supplier need to uh, then buyer need to payment in within the time limit specified under the msme act and if the the if the, the status is the medium size enterprise then this section will not be applicable to the msme enter and entity even if the register under the msme act understand the further about 43 bh enterprise need to pay micro and small enterprise supply within 15 days or 45 days if payment is not made in made within the above time limit the amount will be added to the taxable income in case no written agreement the payment should be made within the 15 days time if there is the written agreement payment should be made as per agreement but maximum time limit would be 45 days expenses include as well as purchase these three condition only need to apply while making the payment First, if there is the agreement, then make the payment as per agreement. If there is no agreement, then the 15 days time. And if there is agreement and agreement says the more than 45 days time limit for making the payment, then the actual date of payment would be maximum is 45 days. And how to impact on taxable income? How to uh, treat it as uh, the disallowance of the purchases or expenses? If the payment to MSME has not been made specified time, then that amount shall be added to your taxable income of SSC in previous year for non-payment of such amount. And SSC has to bear the tax liability on such amount and SSC gets the deduction previous year and which payment is made. One more rider here. According to RBI notification number, uh, 2006 and 7 if enterprise not make the payment to micron small enterprise in above specified payment then make to payment of compound interest at monthly rest to the supplier at the three times the bank interest notified by rbi and it should be disallowance under section 37 here is the one more rider First of all, buyer need to make the payment to the supplier within the time limit as we discussed earlier. Now, there is the interest provision for difference period. Difference period start from the date or due date of the as per agreement or 15 days time or 45 days maximum time and the date of actually make the payment. The difference between two, buyer need to make the payment of three times a specified date on monthly basis as per the RBA notification number 2006-7306 and that interest will be this allowance under section 37 and in need to like a buyer in their PNL debited the interest expense but while filing the return under the head of which is a cow out for the PGBP head interest expenditure and added back to their income and need to pay tax on that now here is the interest expense be allowable under section 37 so what is the interest expenditure allowable expenditure under section 16 this interest expenditure in nature of panel interest so interest expense incurred for the delayed payment to micro and small enterprise is not allowed under section 37 of the income tax act 
not in case any objection was raised in writing fit within the 15 days from the date of delivery of the goods and rendering of the service by the buyer regarding acceptance of the goods or service then the date of acceptance shall be the date on which such object objection is removed by the supplier in short interest is the like penal interest allowable expenditure under section 37 if the, the accrued owner before 31st march or interest paid on delayed payment to msme are allowable other type of interest are allowable under section 37 but this interest of uh, uh, delayed in payment to msme entity, uh, entity are not allowable expenditure under section 37 of the income tax act let us see through example let us understand with the help of practical example a has sold the goods to b on first july a is the micro enterprise a has make the payment to a. No, b has make the payment to a on first february 2024 b has made may made the payment to a before 31st march but after 45 days according to income tax act we will allow make allow payment in 23-24 but b has to make the payment of compound interest at monthly rate for three times at the bank rate of rbi even if not demanded by the a calculate from the due date till date of payment further interest expense are disallowed while computing the income under head pgbp okay here is the clear picture of this interest provision three things need to understand or remember if buyer has not make the payment within the time limit then need to pay interest and interest are not allowable expenditure need to uh, add it back to their income and uh, need to pay three times more the interest as at the rate specified on by the rbi now any question on this subject or any poser or any query are welcome through send your query through email nithinampathak at gmail.com or whatsapp here is the number 9825804094 thanks for hearing keep tuning for our next program detail all available on blog see anything in patak.blogspot.com thank you